What's going on YouTube? Today I'm gonna talk about um, what's involved to replace a valve body on a GM 10 speed transmission. That video is not really about replacing it, like I'm not showing you how to replace it, rather, it's um, what's involved to do it. I wouldn't suggest um, anybody to do this job, to be honest, because it is, um, I'll let the professionals do it. If you show your vehicles under warranty, let the pros handle it. Um, this vehicle here is a 2023 Chevy Silverado. It's a common transmission found on a lot of GM vehicles, mostly on higher trim GM trucks and SUVs. Um, that, that one um, have a P0747 for gear ratio one stock on, something like that. And GM issued a bulletin for it at, um, at the end of last year. That code, there are a few things that you have to do, but um, at the end, you're gonna end up having to, to replace the valve body. That's what he wants you to do. They want you to do pretty much. So I'm doing it now. Um, well, as you guys see here, I'm just draining the transmission. That would be very nice if they had the drain plug, but unfortunately, most vehicles nowadays don't have a drain plug for the transmission. I don't know why, I think it's the dumbest idea, but they don't want to, they, they, most of them don't. You have to take the pin out that they have about 18 bolts holding it in place and um, just for you to take the fluid out and refill it. That's um, the fluid magnet. The magnet's job here is to collect um, dirt and debris, clutch materials going on the transmission. Look at the fluid here. This vehicle is 25,000 miles and the fluid already look like that. That's why um, I recommend people to change the fluid in the transmission. Every 40 to 50,000 miles, do a paint job and we fill transmission at least. Even if you don't replace the filter, I would suggest you drop the paint every 50,000 miles, maybe 75,000 miles and change the fluid. You guys, um, right now I'm taking the filter out. The bolt for the filter is one time use. This job is under warranty. So when I ordered the valve body, I ordered all the one time use. Most of the bolt on the valve body are one time use pretty much. They are top to yield. You have to replace them in the special bolt. They're different length. And you need to know which bolt to remove when you're doing this. Um, I'm taking out, um, I'm unplugging um, the fluid accumulator. The fluid accumulator's job is um, when you get to a stop sign or to the red light, the vehicle will shut off, but it will supply fluid pressure to the transmission during that time or to start it. Because the, the fluid pump inside the transmission doesn't run unless the engine is running. So you need an accumulator that boosts the pressure when the engine is off. So I'm, I'm, I'm removing it out of the transmission. It's held by three T30 bolt. Only those bolt, they're not one time use. You can, you can reuse them. And I'm thinking you need, you need enough space so you can take the valve body out. Right now I'm unplugging on the, the park inhibitor. I, can't, I don't know if I say it the right way, but its purpose is this, those vehicles don't have a mechanical shifter. They use, um, it's there is switches buttons to put in a park reverse and drive if job is to keep the vehicle if for you you can't put the vehicle in park while driving it pretty much that's his whole job that's what he's does it's a solenoid this job is to keep the vehicle in park those bolts are one time use also it's held by two bolts if you just a little solenoid that's attached um, on the side of the valve body one time use and I'm unplugging the main harness for the valve body. Right now I'm removing the bolt for it. It's about, I think I need to remove six bolt. Once again, one time use eight millimeter. I literally had to go back and forth between the computer while doing it because it's my first time doing that job. My first time really doing, working on that transmission, the 10 speed. It looks like I'm gonna be doing quite a few of them because it is a common issue. But it's my first time doing it. I had to take my time and literally go to every step to make sure I do the job right. I'm taking the last boat right now. This thing is pretty heavy. 
So when you take the boat off, it, you have the tendency to just drop. And um, you, you have to be really be careful. So here is our transmission. You look at here, your fluid pump with the um, is gear driven. That's why you have that pla pink plastic thing around it. That's your parking power here. It's electronic. There is a solenoid once again that control it. Here is our new valve body, and that's the old one. That's I need to. That's a barcode for it. It does have a code when you program the transmission. You can move forward without that code here, that little barcode. But GM is nice enough to send you a paper that actually have the code. But if you don't have that paper, you have um, you have to scan it. There are three different spots, but there is only, you only need one of them. You need to take a picture of it with the barcode and it will give you the code when you program in the transmission. It's like a calibration that, um, that I, I can't, exp I don't know how to say this. It's there for the solenoid to get the right calibration because that 10 speed is on a lot of GM vehicles. They have different applications. They, they are on the Tahoe, the Suburban, the Silverado, 1500. Um, not the heavy duty or the 1500s and they are they, they have different applications so we need different calibrations for gearing and um, shifting if you're towing with the vehicle and um, have family in your truck or SUV that's the whole purpose and for for you to have the best gas mileage so that's why you have you have to have the right calibration if you don't the vehicle will shift like crap literally initially when I after I put um when I put everything back together, test driving it, it was flaring through every gear until it, I think um, the, um, every clutch shift has to be filled up with fluid and uh, I had to go back with it and recalibrate it and um, that's when he, he was shifting right again. So I'm, I just put the new valve body on, I put the new, I put the connector and I'm putting um, the fluid accumulator in the back. The job is very messy. It's, it's messy, that's one thing. I had a lot of um, rag on the floor just to minimize the mess. You can stop it, it will happen. You, you, you can minimize it. That's that's all you can do with it, really. And um, by the way, most of the seals that come, you need to replace them. Like the accumulator do have a seal, you need to replace it. <laughs> but in all honesty, the 10 speed is probably um, the best shifting transmission GM ever put out. This thing shifts out better. When it's working, which it does, those transmissions don't really have problems. They don't really do. Compared to a 6 speed, in X speed to a certain extent, they don't really have that many problems. And if you do have problem, it's usually under warranty and they will take it. GM will take care of it like that one. It's under warranty. It's a valve body problem. GM will replace it. It's like a thousand dollar, five hundred, one thousand five hundred dollar part fluid filter. New, um, yeah, that's the whole thing. So that's the talk specification here. Like as you guys see here, I'm talking. I need to go back and forth between the screen to know which box, which boat to talk. Um, the talk spec for it is um, 89, 90 inch pound. That's not much at all. So, but you need to have it right. And I have to go back and forth. You tell me what boat to type next. And by the way, those valve bodies, they do have a special bolt. I'm putting a new filter on here now. They do have a special bolt. Those bolts um, is what to hold the valve body together. And they have bolt that hold the valve body to the transmission. The bolt I was talking here are the bolt for the valve that hold the valve body to the transmission. The other bolt, I would do take them out and they have a special, um, they have a special tool to remove them. I don't have it yet. I had to use my coworker. I thought I, I would need it, but I didn't. I didn't have to use it at all. I forgot how they call it, but um, it's some kind of tox bit. It's generally I, I saw it on the new Corvette too, inside the transmission. 
most GM vehicles not have that little bolt, but it's it's there for a reason. It's for you to not you don't remove it unless you have to, unless the instructions say to do to remove it. But uh, as you need it, I'm putting the fluid pin back on. The gasket is reusable. All I have to do is just clean it and then clean the pin, put the gas, put the filter on, fill the transmission. And now uh, I have to go back to the vehicle and program it. I'm just putting the bolt through. This thing has at, at least 18 to 20 bolts holding it in place. I had to speed through it. Although I'm adding a toggle bolt, I, I calibrate the gun so it doesn't go crazy um, to overtake those bolts. In case you guys didn't see me use the torque wrench, I'm gonna fill the transmission um, with um, Dextron ULV. I have to use um, the fluid, the, the transmission flush machine to pump the fluid through um, the transmission. That's the fill plug here. It is the fill plug and adjust level. So. It is the eight millimeter Allen socket. I fill the tank of that pump with nine quarts of um, fluid. It's gonna pop it real quick. You really have to pay attention. Like I, it happened to me. He, he, he stopped pulling out. I had to um, every up get few more rags to not um, to minimize the mess really. And once it start coming out, you're good. And you shut it off. It's one of my favorite machines, by the way, to flush transmissions. So I can uh, program uh, the solenoid and the transmission. Transmission control module and CVM. Okay, so we say now replace valve body. So it's asking me for the part number. Okay, so it's doing this thing now. Okay, check if it's up and running now. We pretty much done. Check for leaks and um, shift to the gears. Mm. No funny noise. Shift to reverse. And shift to low gear. Low gear. And I go up one. So now all we have to do now um, is check the fluid level. The vehicle have to be running. Check the fluid level. Get the temperature. The transmission up to temperature. I think 100 185 degrees. Um, maybe less, but uh, transmission is pretty cold right now. 79 degrees. Um, I'm gonna wait until you reach 180 degrees, 170 degrees and check the fluid, um, the fluid level. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching.